Hello everybody, welcome back to our virtual classroom and another lesson in our trades training video series. In this lesson, we're going to cover fasteners and how they work. So let's get right into it. When we're choosing fasteners, we can choose between a nail or a screw. There's pros and cons of each. Nails will install very quickly, they're very productive. Screws will be slower to install. When we're talking about a nail, we have very good uh, shear strength with most nails and screws, we have to get into specialized screws before we can match that shear strength. When we're talking about installing uh, a nail, they go in very quickly, that's with pneumatics or even hand-driven. Screws are much slower and they require literally several twists for each fastener. With a nail, we have this problem that they can pull out or move because of the way the shank's made. A screw with its threads will offer a lot more clamping strength. So with this trade of less shear strength, often you get more clamping strength. So let's go over the parts of a nail. I have a 12 inch garden spike here and this is my nail on steroids. So what we have here is a nail with very few parts, but these parts are very important, starting with the head of the nail. This is wider than the shank of the nail most of the length of the nail is made with the shank and the head offers that clamping strength. The shank of the nail needs to be, uh, needs to bite or, or penetrate the base material and it will hold with friction. This is a smooth shank and at the end of our shank we have a tip. This is what you'd call a diamond tip. It has basically four sides uh, carved or stamped in it. It comes to a point this allows us to drive this fastener into the material more easily. There's a lot of variations of nail heads on nails and we see a bunch of different ones here. They're going to be larger, smaller. Some of them might have a texture on the top that will help to grab or grip the head of the hammer as they're being struck or driven. Some of them might be smaller so that they don't show up as much once they're set. Some of them might be so small that they will almost disappear or can be set below the surface of the material. So you have three choices here. You're going to have a wide head that will sit flat on the material and clamp down. You have a medium sized head that will also set flush to the surface, but offer some clamping force. And then you have the finished head that will be so small it can be driven below the surface. The shank of the nail also can come in different shapes and sizes. So here you see three versions. You see a smooth shank on the top. You also have a spiral shank in the middle and then a ring shank at the bottom. The difference of these is that the smooth shank at the top it will offer the least amount of friction in the material. These will be more likely to pull out over time and they don't offer as much holding power. The spiral shank works a lot like a screw that we'll talk about later. And these actually, as you drive them in, they spin. So that almost creates a screw-like action. The ring shank offers a sort of a bite like the spiral does. And both the spiral and the ring shank are very difficult to pull out once they're uh, driven in. These are specialty and are sometimes needed when we need that extra grip or force or holding force. So the point of the nail has to be there. There are times when the point of the nail, we might dull it out to achieve a certain result, but the basics of the point is the sharper the point, the easier that nail will drive through. The duller the point, the more uh, or the less likely we will split the material that we're driving this particular fastener into. So now this is my favorite part. I get to go through all these different types of fasteners and hopefully I can explain to you where you will see these. These are should be common construction uh, nails that you'll see often. So to start with as a common nail, this is our go-to framing nail. You're going to use a lot of these when in the beginning of wood frame construction, you're nailing two buys together. Your typical ones would be a uh, 16D and an 8D nail. You'll use loads of these when you're framing. Okay. A 16D nail is your uh, your main one, your AD nail, will be used for less structural situations. But if you're 
trying to hold a house together, you'll use pounds and pounds of these guys. So a common nail will have a large head on it for good clamping. It's going to have a thick shank. This will hold well in a two by material. It needs to be driven with a framing hammer. So we need a good thick shank so it won't bend. And it has your typical diamond point on the end. Next up, we have box nails. These should not be used in place of common nails. The shank is thinner, so they're a weaker nail. They will have the same wide head on them, so it might be difficult to tell them apart, even the same point on them. A lot of times you'll find these galvanized. These are good for nailing thinner materials, not two bys, but more, say, one by, maybe even a five-quarter board. This would be trim work on the outside of a house siding applications, that kind of thing. And often, if I mentioned before, these can be galvanized for that exterior purpose. Spiral nails, I think they're funny because they literally spin when you drive them, which makes them hard to drive. These nails are near impossible to pull out. The head will be a little thinner than a box nail and the shank is definitely thinner. Same point on the end. These get driven in and are good for holding materials like siding. Uh, a lot of exterior applications where you have weathering, you have heat and then cooling cycles, that tends to pull nails out. A, this fluted or spiral shank will hold that nail in. It will not allow it to back out as easy. So these have a much better clamping power than a common or a box nail. A variation of a spiral shank nail would be a ring shank nail. This is a drywall nail and it has rings on it. These rings work like um, threads, like on a screw. They'll have the holding power of the spiral nail and these are very difficult to pull out as well. So if you're driving these kind of nails, make sure you're putting them in the right place and that you will not need to pull them out. It is guaranteed that you will have to damage some material often to get these nails out. Next up, we have finished nails. As you can see, the head on this finish nail is not much bigger than the shank of it. We would expect to drive this nail flush to the surface and then set it below the surface, fill that surface, and this nail would disappear. Whenever we're doing finished carpentry, uh, a lot of finished trim, this is a great nail to use to make sure that it doesn't show. When we're doing finish work, we don't wanna see our fasteners a lot of the time. The other thing to mention is the downside of a finish nail is that it has a smooth shank and no head. So you're not getting a lot of clamping power or holding power of these nails. So you have to be careful where you use them and consider them not the best for grip. You will surely see a roofing nail when you're building. I have a couple of roofing nails here. These don't tend to be very long. This is a two inch roofing nail. And I would say that this nail is uh, probably as big as I've ever used for uh, roofing. These tend to be shorter because they're holding thinner materials to a base. As you can see, it has a very wide head, even bigger than our common nails. The shank is not particularly thick, but it's thick enough to be driven through the material and hold fairly well. Has a simple diamond point on the end, just like all of our other nails. You will use a roofing nail in a lot of applications where you have thin materials that need to attach to a solid base. That runs into a lot of roofing. It also could be something like a window flange that needs to be fastened to sheathing on the outside of a building. All of these different types of nails will come in different sizes. There's ranges and there's ways we talk about the sizing of nails. You might hear a penny size. It might be a 16 penny nail. That would be this guy. This is our 16 penny common nail. You might hear it called a 16 D nail. It's the same thing. The 16 D nail will have a 0.162 decimal inch equivalent as far as the diameter or thickness of the nail. It also can fall under an eight gauge when we're talking about gauge or wire gauge. That gets into less common terminology for nails. Usually you'll hear D, penny, or you might see that decimal equivalent for an inch. A 16D nail will always be three and a half inches long, and an 8D nail will always be two and a half inches long. <laughs>